Well, this is a water feature I built some 18 months, two years ago in the garden to hide a, a really unsightly water tank. It's mostly made of stone, laterite block and some precast sort of cement columns. You can make your pond with anything. So what we're going to do is sort of emulate this to a degree, uh, but really different and being undercover and with a glass viewing panel, a bit like an aquarium. So this is new ground for me and uh, I shall find this very very interesting. So I do hope you enjoy this video and it's useful to you. Thank you. Well, here's a couple of shots of our finished project. Very very pleased with it. Turned out very well, no leaks, no problems whatsoever. Um, the water is good, everything is 100%. Well off we jolly well go then. Uh, we're going to build this pond, this aquarium pond or whatever you want to call it. Uh, underneath in the uh, carport, uh, I used to have a water feature here but it wasn't very clever so I decided to rip it out and go with this new project. Please please heed this warning, it's very important. Uh, what I've done here, I've put up a water and vapour barrier. Um, in this case it's some sort of aluminium coated uh, polythene which I can just scrounge around in the um, in the outhouse. Uh, but 1000 gauge polythene would do, 500 gauge polythene would do. That, that'll be absolutely fine. And I've also knocked up some um, wall ties, which uh, you can see here. Now what I've done here, I've marked out the outline of the pond. The actual pond, not the, not the, not the, the, the back piece or the waterfall. So that's marked out. I've stepped back two inches or 50 mil here, just to break this this line here. Otherwise, it'll look stupid because this will be coming up in brickwork, and for brickwork to show here like this wouldn't look right. So, you should always offset things like that. <coughs> excuse me, if you're using different materials. So, I've cut this, cut the waterproof membrane back about half an inch behind the line, half an inch, which is about 15 mil, 10 to 15 mil, and I've followed the shape of the pond round, and it's uh, rectangular with curves on the corners, and so you, otherwise you might bash yourself against it, and it just looks nice, the curves always look nice and straight edges. This drainage pipe I knocked up yesterday, uh, it's inch and a quarter PVC, or 35 mil, as it's called here and 35 mil in actual fact it's an inch and three eighths so this is Thailand so <laughs> yeah, I don't know but it, it's, it measures 35 millimeters that's for sure so we've got a 90 degree elbow there which will be where the water goes in and we've got an, an outlet here the threaded outlet threaded stop we'll here. position this so the threaded end is roughly half an inch off the ground or off the concrete in this case and through the actual hexagonal part here just proud of the brickwork so there'd be let's say half an inch so what's that 10 15 mil and of course there'll be a slope on that so you'll be about an inch underneath this one your concrete will come in like this, which is shape the bottom of the pond so it all flows in like that. <coughs> For the mortar I'm going to use, I'll do a ratio of three to one. And the sand I've got for nothing, would you believe? Pumpkin <laughs> out. In other words, I'm a tight so and so. But no, a neighbour was digging a well, and this is the kind of soil we have here. Uh, less than a foot down, less than 300 mil down, you get pure, pure sand. I mean, it's it's great. You don't even have to wash it. You use it for rendering, or in this case for this brickwork, because I want to, um, I want to point it so, or flush point it. So I want a nice fine sand for that. So that that's ideal. So I do three buckets of that to one bucket of ordinary Portland cement. And it's important to get your, you know, to get the ratios right. I've always been a stickler for, for uh, when mixing concrete or mortar, 
render anything like that to get the proportions right and make sure it's thoroughly mixed it is very important and water obviously clean water in this case I'll put a bit of um, washing up liquid in um, which acts as a plasticizer or you can go and buy a mortar plasticizer if you want to but uh, I find this works fine for me and because of these bricks are so small as you can see they're only what 50 60 mil width two two and a half inches and an ordinary brick trowel is no good here and they in Thailand they use a pointing trowel well I've used my trusty old um, gauging trowel which plasterers use in the UK now that works perfectly it's a nice nice match for that uh, I've used that I've done I don't know how many tons of brickwork and stonework and blockwork in the garden around here so there we are that's the tools so I'll mix those thoroughly in the wheelbarrow by hand uh, looking at it here now you can see uh, the outline the shape of the actual pond you see it's um, rounded corners lovely rounded corners so you won't bang your knees when you walk around and it'll look nice as well now I build up one course of this brick with three and one cement and the face isn't finished yet there's mortar still going off a little bit so what I do in this particular case the pointing is just going to be with a sponge so you get a damp sponge and just brush that like that and what that does that, that smooths off the mortar and at the same time cleans the brickwork now you have to do that several times to get the brickwork up you know re really clean um, it'll, well, it won't weather in in this case because it's undercover but uh, normally that'll weather in in a week or two I mean, you, you know the, the brickwork will stand out really nicely right now here's our drain pipe with a fall on it it's got a fall of about 1 in 50 1 in 20 something like that and it's got a decent fall on it and I've checked on that and most important a piece of cement bag is the number one uh, thing to stick in the end of your pipe to stop mortar getting in there and blocking it before you even start that's the last thing you want cement bag is the best really twist it in there nice and tight if it does jam in all you have to do is put water in it or soften up and just poke it through it's that simple and um, we've got a little bit of um, rebar mesh I don't know what it is three mil it's, it's what they use here in Thailand I mean to me it's crap um, they use it um, on driveways and everything and really it's just not strong enough but for something like this where um, we already got a, a, a good substrate in actual fact we've got the, the concrete floor of the um, carport which is six inches of solid concrete reinforced with proper reinforcing bars um, so it's not going to go anywhere in that respect so I'm quite happy with that that's that's fine so what we're going to do now is put another course of brick up around and then rough out concrete in the middle 421 concrete what we've done here we mixed up um, 421 concrete with ordinary Portland cement hello dog he's got, always got to be in on the act get out of the way and that's about three and a half to four inches deep which is 90 to 100 mil so we'll let that go off tonight and as you can see we've kept the concrete about half an inch, quarter to half an inch down from the top of the outlet pipe for the pond drainage system. So there we are, that's it. I've decided to run all the pipe work through the wall right through into the store behind and then I should connect everything up with ball valves so everything is adjustable. Uh, it's a late decision but uh, I'm glad I've made it. So the parts of the video may not be terribly relevant. All the new pipe work is half inch or 12.5 millimeters. Right, now because the brickwork doesn't tie in with the block work we have to use ties, so I've made my own, as I said before. Out, whoops, out of a uh, quarter inch or five mil uh, mild steel rebar. I think it's mild steel. The reason anyway. I haven't tied that in is, as you can see, these bricks have holes in the end. And if we tie it in like so, 
but you get the holes showing. Now that's okay in some circumstances. It looks quite good actually if you're doing some fancy clip work. It looks very good. But here I don't want it. I want it uh, to look good. I want it to, to be all, all the same. So here we go. We'll, and what I do normally is Because the thing is with this, this muck, this mortar, it's so, the sand is so fine, and with the plasticizer of it, it, it's very sticky. Like I said, you're going to fill all the holes in, in the blocks. So, now then, there we go, in the centre, roughly, and push it down, and then just running over the top, because so the ties not to rust out, they must be surrounded with mortar or concrete without any air in. So you don't put the tie down first on the on the brick or the block. You lay a little bed of uh, mortar first and then you put it uh, then you put the brick down. <laughs> One of the dogs has taken up residence in the pond. We're in a new pond. <laughs> I thought you were wondering what this gap is here. Um, but I'm going to put uh, some toughened glass or reinforced glass in there, six or eight mil, uh, as, as a window, uh, a bit like an aquarium, front of an aquarium, if you like. Which I think, you know, it's something I've always wanted to do. So now I've got the time, <laughs> um, idle hands, and all that sort of thing. I thought I'd have a go at it now. I'll do something like that to put glass in there is uh, it, it's probably quite a specialised um, task. So. For any newbies, beginners or whatever, or people uncertain about uh, putting that feature into a pond, I should forget it and just carry on straight across with your bonded brickwork, which you have on your lower courses, straight across like that. And just you'll just have a straightforward pond then. Okay. If you're going to have a uh, some sort of a mask or a face here, or I don't know a. a a shell or some, some sort of feature of water tumbling down to make a cascade or just a, a spout like a face with a spout coming on you'll need to think about the pipework to go in now and this is the top roughly this is going to be our water level more or less uh, uh, so we want our pipework to go in about three or four inches below the surface of the water because you, you don't want to be if you've got a problem you don't want to be messing around, hanging over there, like digging around sort of in a couple of feet of water. And, you know, don't worry about the pipe. You can paint it if it's showing. If you, that worries you, or after a couple of months, it'll green up. You'll get algae growing on it, so that'll be no problem. Right, now I've got here 18 mil, three quarter inch pipe. You don't need any bigger than that. We're not talking Niagara Falls here, or or Victoria Falls or Rapids or anything like that. All we want is a tinkle of water, peaceful. We don't want gushing torrents. Well, I wouldn't recommend it anyway. It needs to be about a foot, 250 mil away from the centre of the pond or of the, the archway or the feature or whatever it is you can have up here. And this joint needs to be glued properly with the with the right glue. The plumbing nowadays is so simple but you know you still need to get it right because if you've got a leak and it's buried in plaster or concrete, you snookered, you had it. Uh, so that can go tight against the wall here. Make sure it's vertical, plumb, it's you know if you're out like that then if you're coming off like that it, it sends this off. So you want it upright, you get it right, and then it is right. Now the reason we don't glue this yet, um, we, we can just pop it on there just for demonstration purposes. It's because you say for example you're buying a mask for this project and you've got it, you know, you've got it from a garden centre or uh, one of these super stores or whatever, it'll come with a plastic hose coming out the back. So you'll eventually you'll glue that on and the plastic hose will come out and connect to here. Now we don't know where this is going yet, 
I'm, I'm assuming we've got the, the height right. You know, you have to work this out yourself. Whatever you want, you want it up here, you want it up there, you want it down there. We ain't doing that. <laughs> but what I've got here, what I did earlier on, I knocked through this wall and put in a piece of um, 40 millimeter plastic pipe going right through with it. This is proud by about two inches, about 50 mil. Uh, when it's rounded, it'll put, be proud um, probably about uh, just over an inch or so, which is fine because any fittings going on to that now will just be forced on, they won't be glued so that we can dismantle anything at a later date if there's a problem. Uh, so that'll be the water coming off of our water feature and go through there into my tanks, my filtration system at the back. The pump will be there and the pump will, uh, with the pipe work coming around the back of the wall, will come out to the water features I plan to do with this one. Whew, that even got me a bit dizzy, that lot. Um, now this pipe here, it's uh, 18 mil, two quarters of an inch, and I've flattened the end, and I did it over the gas stove and a pair of pliers, just flattened the end a bit, because I want the, I don't want it, the water to come out as a dribble, I want it to be forced out like a jet. And that would come round and circulate the water in the pond. Not, not too much, just an, enough to allow the sediment to move and then slowly settle to the bottom, to the bottom drain. That's the plan. <laughs> the best laid plans of mice and men. No, that'll work fine, I'm quite happy with that. So there we are, that's it. Okay. As you can see, I'll put in this uh, three quarter inch pipe, which is 18 mil metric. And this will be for a, a water pump inside the pond to a mask up here. I'm going to put the sun mask up here. And that'll be as an alternative to going through the filters, which I'll st still, which I will retain that mess. See, I've built up the two sides. We've got the radii in, so that's okay. I'm going to leave the front open for the moment. Because um, I said before, we can have glass in here, but I'm not going to cast the lintel until I've finished all of this here to make ease of going in and out. And then, you know, it makes life a lot easier. Now, I've started, I've filled out the corners a little bit to, to round off these squares so that all the, the malmum sediment goes in towards that drainage point in the centre. I couldn't there. find the materials I wanted. Uh, the place where I usually go has been bulldozed, raised to the ground. But we went to Angsalar and managed to get a few other bits and pieces. And I'm going to cast quite a few bits and pieces myself, or, you know. Heath Robinson. Well these I've got, they're uh, 15 baht each. And they're one foot, which is 300 by six inches which is 150 millimetres and they're what are they about an inch and a quarter inch and a half so that's 35 mil thick now what I've done I've, I've cut these here this will be about an inch down from that um, cupping stone there or coping stone will be the water level roughly I haven't quite decided yet but that'll, that'll be about it we're going to build all of this up but as I'm casting the stuff, it's going to take me ages because I'll have to do a little bit, wait till it goes off, then uh, fix it. So, this is hollow behind here, so I'll put a steel in. The steel up here, again this quarter reed bar. Now when the castings are done with the clamshells, uh, which I'll give you a, a little clip of later on, or in a minute even, That'll be built in there like that, and then I shall fill in behind here with neat cement or concrete or something to tie this all in to make it solid. So it'll be a solid pier, and at the moment it's hollow in behind there. And the same over here, we'll come up to about this height, I think, and we'll come across here with tile. Probably not this, it might be too thick, and then here I should build an archway. Now I have my, my sun mask here, and the two shells, one here and one here. So I've knocked up this little wooden box here uh, with, with two units in it which are the same size as the blocks I've used in the pond. And I've done it with um, 
just the ordinary concrete, 421 uh, concrete. And to get this effect, I've just used this, this trowel here, this float here. And just as it's been going off, while it's still fairly wet, just jiggled it up and down so it gives it that sort of stippled effect, which looks quite, quite effective. So, my knees are on here just to keep everything in place. So I've got my grandson coming around later on and he'll be, oh, God, he's a nightmare. Oh, hello again. Uh, as you can see, I've got the pipe work through, or most of them through, one, two, three, through into the store at the back. Already. This is where the sun is going to go, and I've knocked a hole through there already to take the pipe from that mask. And as you can see, the scallop shells are in. And as you can see, the clam shells are in now. That's turned out well. Um, I'll bed these on tomorrow, both sides. Flower pot here. Flower pot here, something hanging down, I think. Some fern or something hanging down to look nice. And this continue up here. Now with the archway here, like this. So it gives you a pretty good idea of what's going on now. This looks rough as hell, but that's being rendered, so I'm not worried about that. Rougher the better, because the, the render will key to that very well. Now in behind here, I've got reinforced bar, and I shall infill, as I've started to infill here, with uh, three on one sand and cement. Just bring that up. Oh, so, all in all, very pleased with it so far. So let's get ourselves set up. I've drawn a straight line around this piece of cardboard. Uh, the outside diameter is 71 centimetres, 710 millimetres or 28 inches. So I've found the centre here, I've scribed an arc like so, and that will be our outside radius of the arc. What I've got here is a quarter inch bit of steel. It'll act as a bit of reinforcing. And then I'll just stiffen everything up whilst I put it up on the wall. And what we're going to do is just lay a bed down here on the cardboard. We use cardboard because it's, it's easy, you can clean the back off and just, you know, it doesn't stick to anything, it's great. And then I'm going to put a fan of these bricks around like so, bed them on. That'll be the first, that's the first well, As you can see now, I've doffed out the uh, archway or the, the, what'll be the backing to the archway. Uh, so that'll be ready to go up tomorrow hopefully. Well here's the finished archway, um, we should leave that for at least 12 hours, maybe 24, make sure it uh, has really gone off. Even with three and one mortar it might be too green to put up tomorrow, we shall see. Anyway, that's that little project over. So here's the back of our archway, uh, as you can see the cement bed is about three quarters of an inch, 18, 20 mil thick, and that's got our piece of uh, curved rebar in. Here's our finished archway. Ready to go up? Well, this is a former I've knocked up uh, to cast a lintel with. Um, I'm not going to cast it in situ, I'm going to bed it on. What we have here is about a three or four inch uh, bearing on each end. Three or four inches, 7,500 mil bearing. Right. Now, Inside, I've got two quarter inch or five mil reinforcing rods coming out of the end about two inches, about 50 mil, as you can see, like that. Now, this proud piece of board here uh, will form a recess in the concrete which will allow the glass front to bed into. Uh, on the front here, I'm going to just do, it's, it'll be concrete, but I'm going to do like a boulder effect, like a, a stippled effect there. So there we are, I'm going to mix up uh, 3, 2, 1 concrete, that's 3 of stone or gravel, 2 of sand, and 1 of cement. There we are. Well, here we are, we just cast our lintel. So uh, give that half an hour or so to go off a little bit and I'll 
stippling up this face here because this this will be the the, the front of the um, the lintel here. So I'll stipple that up, make it a little little bit attractive, and that's it. Straight like tomorrow. Well, that's the archway put in situ now, all glued on with sand and cement. And inside the archway is now uh, finished rendered, uh, stoker finish that's spon sponged up, uh, lightly sponged up, and that's with waterproof sand and cement, uh, three to one. And I've scratch coated the sides of the pond as well. So, we're getting there slowly. Here's our lintel that we cast yesterday. You see with the reinforcing steel sticking out both ends and the recess to take the glass for the front of the pond. Turned out very well. Well, we're nearly there now. I've uh, scratch coated all of the inside of the pond now and put the lintel in, the reveals and a, a sort of sill out of uh, bits of scrap tiles I found and various other bits and pieces. Oh, not brilliant but it's gone in well. But bear in mind it is a rustic feature this, it's not meant to be um, you know all twee. <laughs> I mean if you were building this you could build it with all sorts of things, uh, tiles, you could even tile the whole thing you know it depends what you wanted you might want it all, all sort of cut stone, dressed stone all that sort of thing but for me that's you know that doesn't suit me, I like the more rustic approach. But you, you can use any materials you want and alter the shape, design, whatever. The basic requirements are that you mix up the ingredients properly. That really is the, is the, the, the main thing to do, the main point. And it's absolutely critical to do that. And then you won't have any problems. In the end I decided against the sun mask and uh, decided to have a cascade of three flower pots of different sizes cut in half with a two and one sand and cement backing. Uh, these will go off for about 24 hours and then I'll glue them within the archway with a, a fairly liquid neat cement mix and that'll be fine. What I've done here I've given the inside of the pond a coat of some sort of plastic water sealer. Now I don't know what it is uh, it's supposed to be for roofs, but I'm going to try it here and see if it works. Because I can't find any pond paint and I can't find any bituminous paint here in Thailand. So it's very much improvising, I'm afraid. Just see how it turns out. Anyway, I've given it two coats of this stuff. Uh, and if I just come across there and then zoom in a little bit. Now you can see the recesses there. <coughs> where the um, glass is going to go. You must make sure that that is thoroughly coated. Um, otherwise there's a possibility, if you don't get the silicon right, the, uh, you know, there's a chance of water seepage. So that must be done 100%. Make sure that it's fully coated all the way around the frame, so to speak. Now this is a product I've used, uh, Sister D100. Uh, it's supposed to be some plastic kind of film or glue which uh, seals roofs so we shall see whatever sealer you use or whatever paint you use please please don't use that dreadful blue that people use for swimming pools for swimming pools it's fine but for ponds koi ponds lily ponds ornamental ponds it looks in my view anyway absolutely hideous and of course the colour detracts from the flesh of your plants, so please try and avoid that if you can. Right, well what I've done, uh, and I haven't shown you on the video really, which is a shame, but it's very remiss of me. I've put the glass in. Um, now it's six millimetre glass, it's not uh, toughened or reinforced or anything. That's quite ad adequate for the water pressure this is going to take, which is minimal really. Uh, it's bedded on with silicon. Um, I did juggle a little bit to get it in because I did the measurements a little bit too precise. I, I didn't leave enough tolerance. So remember that if you if you do it yourself, uh, if you're going to uh, put the glass panel in yourself, remember to allow at least an eighth, 
two to three millimetre all round uh, for a tolerance. And what I did on, when I, uh, before I fitted it, just to uh, offer it in place first to make sure that there wasn't any snags. And like I say, it was tight, so it's lucky I did that first before I covered everything in silica. Otherwise, it would have been a right mess. <laughs> what I did, I got a couple of wedges, like so. I put them inside here and rested the glass on them and offered the glass in, jiggled it around just to make sure it was going to flip but okay. Uh, took the glass out, siliconed all round inside, heavily siliconed it. I mean, re really, because it, you can't have enough on this situation. Um, and it's quite a reasonable gap, you know, it's a quarter of an inch, five mil to six, seven mil gap. So you need to make sure your silicone's well in there and you've got plenty of it. And you must get on top of it immediately because it starts to cure after five minutes. So you've really got to do it. Get everything prepared and then crack it out. If you've got a friend, a mate or a wife or somebody who can just, you know, for example, just pass you the glass while you're trying to fit it, that sort of thing, that would help. And when you put the glass in, make sure you remove these blocks because they, if you don't, they will leave a gap underneath. Even if you run your finger along and rub the silicone in, you'll, you'll get an air bubble in there which could, at one point, cause the uh, pond to leak. It's just a suggestion. Anyway, here's our panel, it's in, and I'll put a cross of um, masking tape here, which I always do on new glasswork, wherever I do any glazing anywhere. I always put a cross in for a week or two, and then people are aware that there is glass there if it hasn't been there, for, uh, if it hasn't been any there for a long time. So, there they are. And before I, I silicone and put the glass in, I ran masking tape around here, like so, and then smooth the silicone bead off with my finger, that finger, and then after a couple of minutes, before it starts to cure, before it starts to set even, you gently peel off the masking tape so you get a decent line along the front there. The switches of um, silicone I have on the glass, I'm not worried about, I, I should take that off with a razor blade later on. That's, that's no problem. So that's it, I think probably 24 hours would be enough for that, and then uh, Bob's your uncle. Fill it with water. <laughs> See if it leaks. Well, this Sobo pump I've used for demonstration purposes is a little bit too powerful. It's rated at 6,000 litres per hour at 135 watts, and I think we really need about a half to two thirds of that power. So, we shall go and look for a recent King number four pump. I think that'll do fine. Please be aware of the dangers of mixing water and electricity. Always consult a fully qualified electrician for all your electrical works around the house, especially those which concern the garden or outhouse use. You must be fully protected with proper circuit breakers. Be warned. Well, I'm not speaking too soon, but appears to be okay. Ah, uh, well, it's only been full five minutes, so we'll see, shall we? Let's try the electricity and get frazzled. Here we go then. Let's try it. Yeah! Ah, first shot. I think that's okay. Happy with that? Alright, let's adjust things. Mm. Oh, pump's okay. That is 100 percent <laughs> That is 100% first time. Well, this is my dear wife, Janta, and she's been waiting ages to see this finish. She's just like a little child. <laughs> and I must say, it's, I'm, well, I'm so pleased with it. I just didn't know well, how it would work out. And oh, it's, it's just brilliant. I'm, it's great, it's not too much noise. 
The pump seems fine. I uh, might get a smaller pump, I don't know. Just see how it goes. Great, well pleased with it. Yeah, a new project, you never know how it's going to work out. Probably a glass will break tomorrow. <laughs> never mind, eh? All good fun. I think it's a little bit noisy, so I might need to use a pump that's less wattage. This is a view uh, inside the store behind the cascade. Uh, as you can see, there are ball valves on each of the flow and returns. And this is really is imperative so that you can control each one individually. Later on, I hope to do another video on how to make your own biological and mechanical filter. Now, the water is fine now. It's been in a week, or just under a week. I've put no additives in, and the pH is 7. So that's neutral, so that's ideal for carp if I decide to keep koi in there. The pH needs to be less if I keep um, tropicals in, you know, the normal freshwater, run-of-the-mill stuff. Anyway, that's it. The electrics are rigged up temporary. I don't recommend this type of setup uh, with an extension lead for any permanency. Only just, I've only just done this for demonstration purposes. You must be aware of the dangers of electricity and water mixing. Okay, so there we are then. That's it. That's the project. For other projects similar to this and for gardening in general and other bibs and bobs, please go to my YouTube channel where there are more videos available. If you like this video, please click the icon in the right hand lower corner uh, or click like or share. Thank you very much for watching.